Now, you can't solve this equation all three of them in one shot because an equation basically means you're only solving with one equal sign. So what you can do is combine these two guys to solve for x and then combine this guy and this guy to solve for w. So what you do is to solve this equation, to solve for w and x, what you would do is say, okay, 5 over, 5 over 10 is equal to 6 over w. Let's do this over here. So what you're going to do is go 5 over 10 is equal to 6 over w. Now to get rid of fractions, all you got to do is cross multiply. So the bottom guy from over here comes to the top over here. The bottom guy from over here comes to the top over here. So this becomes 5w is equal to 10 times 6 is 60. And then divide by 5, divide by 5. So w is equal to 60 divided by 5 is 12. So right away, you just solve for w, which is over here, which is 12. Now you want to solve for x. Oh, sorry, you solve for not w, you solve for x. Let's change this up. So this is x. So you just solve for this guy, which is 12. Use the right symbols in the right places. Now, you want to solve for w? All you do is combine this guy and this guy. You could combine this and this because you already have, you just solve for x, you have this. But to, again, um, make sure you're not uh, continuously uh, continuing error from one question to the other, just use the, uh, use the numbers that they gave you instead of using the numbers you calculated, just in case you made a mistake here. Because if you use the 12 here, and if you made a mistake to tr try to figure out what W is, then the W is going to be wrong because this was wrong. So go back to the original, what they gave you, and relate it to that, okay? So this would be 5 over 10 is equal to W over 8. So again, what you do is cross multiply. So this becomes 8 times 5 is 40, is equal to 10w, and then divide by 10, divide by 10, so w is equal to 4. So you just solve for w, which is 4. So basically this is a triangle that you had <laughs> w is equal to w. w is equal to 4. So this becomes 4. So what you had here was a triangle that's been multiplied by 2 to give you these dimensions. So this guy is twice as big as this guy. It's simple as that. You're doing uh, similar triangles. You're using ratios to solve one triangle by knowing the dimensions of another triangle. And all you need is a connector. The connectors are all the angles have to be the same, and you have to have the dimensions, the length of the same side from both triangles. And that for us was 5 and 10. That was a ratio that we, we, could, we could use to solve the other, the other sides, okay? I'm going to do one more just to clear things up here. So let's do one more similar triangle. We understand congruent triangles. Congruent is just basically if they're identical triangles. And all you need is side, 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 uh, side, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, which is the same as angle, angle, side. So for similar triangles, what we need is angle, angle, angle. So if they give you a triangle, let's say this guy, and they give you another triangle, let's say this guy. And they say this guy is equal to this, this is equal to this, and that is equal to that. Let's give this as a 5.1. Let's make this one x. Let's make this one 2. Let's make this guy, the relationship, make it 17.3. Give this one as uh, 6 and this one as Q. So, what you're going to try to do is say, connect up the sides with each other and put them as ratios. Okay, so one side, which is equivalent to the other side in this, 
in the other triangle, the similar triangle, on top of each other. So what you're going to do is look at the angles and connect up the sides. So this is a double tick angle and that's a double tick angle. So this guy controls the opposite side and this guy controls the opposite side. So what you're going to do is say 5.1 over 17.3 must be equal to, here's a triple side, which is x over 6 must be equal to, here's a single side, 2 over q. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is, if you call this triangle A and if you call this triangle B, then all the links for triangle A go up top and all the links for triangle B go on the bottom. Do not switch these up, otherwise the answer is not going to be correct. Now you can switch up the whole thing and put all the B's on top and put all the A's in the bottom, but you have to be consistent. If you're putting all the links for side A up top, they all have to go up top. If you start off with side B length in the bottom, then the rest of the sides for the B triangle has to go in the bottom for you to be able to solve this. Okay? So, now that we have this, we can start solving for X and Q. What you do is, you do your cross multiplication. Again, all you're doing is taking a chunk out of this and leaving that one alone, solving for X, and then you're going to take this guy and this guy do the same thing, solve for Q. So 5.1 over 17.3 must be equal to X over 6. So what you do now is, to get rid of your fraction, cross, multiply. What we got is 6 times 5.1, 6 times 5.1 is 30.6 is equal to 17.3 x. And what you do, you've got to get x by itself, divide by 17.3, divide by 17.3. So 30.6 divided by 17.3 is 1.768, if you round it up, 8. So x is 1.769. Let's round it up to three decimal places. To solve for Q, we got that now, I'm going to erase it. If we're going to solve for Q, what we're going to do is we're going to take 5.1 over 17.3 equals to 2 over Q. 5.1 over 17.3 is equal to 2 over Q. Again, what we're going to do, cross multiply. So Q comes up and multiplies this. This guy comes up and multiplies that. So that's going to be 5.1Q is equal to 17.3 times 2. 17.3 times 2. Which is 36.6, 34.6 divided by 5.1, divided by 5.1. So Q is going to be equal to 34.6 divided by 5.1 is 6.78. 6.78. So Q is going to be 6.78. So to be consistent, if we took this to two decimal places, we want to express this to two decimal places. So we're going to round 69 up to 7. What you should do now is do a visual confirmation to make sure you got everything correct. Let's see, 5.1 is equivalent to 17.3. Across from the triple tick is 1.77, and that's 6. And across from the single tick is 2, and across from the single tick is 6.78. So this guy is the smallest side here, and this guy is the smallest side. That makes sense. That's the middle side, that's the middle side, and that's the longest side, and that's the longest side. Okay, so visually you should confirm at the end if it makes sense. The numbers might be a little off, but if it works out like this, you should have done it correctly, you should have the right answers, okay? So this is similar triangles, and it's extremely useful when you're trying to find uh, the dimensions of one triangle when you don't know the exact 
angles and it's not a right angle triangle because that way if it's not a right angle triangle you can't use the Pythagorean theorem you have to use something else so what you do is you do a comparison from one triangle to another triangle and that's similar triangles okay good luck in the problems